Something great just happened for graffiti artists and graffiti writers in North America specifically, and maybe in the rest of the world too, I don't know, you guys tell me. But before a couple months ago, these Molotov dripstick minis were particularly difficult to get on the large scale in North America specifically. But now, bombingscience.com has started stocking all 13 colors of this six millimeter super squeezy drip mop. These things are incredibly squeezable. They have that beautiful refill from the back system, so you don't even have to take off the nib when you're refilling them. Always a bonus, saves you a bit of mess, hopefully. And they are perfectly sized to fit in a pocket comfortably carry around with you if you're a casual writer. But this particular mini squeeze mop is actually the most expensive squeeze mop of all the major brands who sell squeeze Mops. It's $2.25 US more than a Grog Squeezer Mini 5mm, and it's about $3.79 US more expensive than the OTR 007. So I think the real question is, what is so much better about the Molotow Dripstick Mini here? And that is exactly the question we are going to be answering right now as we do a full surface tagging test with these Molotow Dripstick Mini Mops. We're going to be tagging up some subscribers' names as well as the names of some of the true kings who are over on my Patreon supporting the channel and making these videos possible for you guys and myself. And we'll be answering three questions while we tag these names up here. Number one, we do want to see how vibrant these colors are. Obviously, you can fill these with just about anything. You can fill them fairly easily with just about anything, but because they come with that Molotow permanent alcohol-based paint, we are going to take advantage of that and see what it writes like, of course. But secondly, and because it's right in the name, the Molotow dripstick, we are going to be taking a look at just how squeezable this mop is. I want to feel like I have complete control over this mop, and the more squeezable you make a mop, the more potential you have to control it well. And number three, along those same lines, how well does the paint flow through this mop? I want to feel like I can get drips that are a meter long, as well as a nice clean line if I really want. So with those three things in mind, I'll do my best to show you, but also to tell you how this mop feels for those of you who haven't used it before and because you can't necessarily see exactly what a mop feels like to write with on screen. So with those in mind, let's get right into it. And you may notice that we are starting off by giving a huge shout out to today's sponsor, which goes a long way towards making these graffiti reviews possible for you guys, Skillshare. If you're somehow not aware, Skillshare is a massive online learning hub where you can explore and learn about just about any topic imaginable, especially if you're a creative person or just someone curious about a creative topic. For example, I have never taken my graffiti to the digital space before, but I wanted to explore how I would do that. And if you want to learn Photoshop for graffiti art or anything else, Elizabeth Ann's learn the basics of Adobe Photoshop class is a great place to start. But there are thousands of classes on Skillshare and new ones are being added every day. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare where you can explore as many of the classes on Skillshare as you want. And you can click the link in the description or in the pinned comment right now to redeem your one month free trial of the entire Skillshare platform. Getting into the Molotow Dripstick Mini tags here, the first thing I'm noticing, and I have to mention this, is just that it feels comfortable. And the reason I have to mention this is because generally with these sort of five millimeter nib, I'm not usually too comfortable with that nib size just because I don't use it on the regular. 
I'm more of a 10 millimeter kind of guy, I don't know. But this feels incredibly comfortable to use, and if I had to put it down to a single factor or two factors, what I think it is, is A, just the squeezability of the mop and the shape of it. Those two factors together result in a very comfortable mop to use. Another factor that I feel really contributes to that is you can tell in the close-ups of the Molotow Dripstick Mini here that the nib is very rounded. And when that happens, for me personally, I just feel it's a little nicer to write with. You do have the freedom to not work on such a directly flat line with the mop. And I think that little bit of freedom you have with the angle at which you're writing with does help a lot of writers, or at least me, feel like they have more freedom doing tags with a mini mop like this. And this is why it's important for me to be able to give you guys a bit of commentary on this because those are factors that you would never be able to see on camera just by seeing me do these tags here. So I'm really hoping that, that these are extra little bits of information that are particularly useful for you guys. That's the level of detail we try and produce here on the channel with our reviews. You can always subscribe if you want to see more of them, of course. In terms of what we call here on the channel the drippability, which is really the viscosity, but we've decided we're fun people here and that's what we're calling it. You obviously have a massive ability to get tags with drips here, especially when the mop is nice and full. The first couple I did, the Knoll tag, I didn't even squeeze that hard, and you can tell it's massive. In terms of writing without drips, there's a couple things that are important to note here. It is possible if you're working on a slightly more porous surface. You guys can't tell on camera, but the part of the surface where I did the 7 Scarrow VCR tag, that is a slightly more porous part of this particular surface. Surface. It just hasn't been buffed as cleanly and you could tell I basically did that whole tag without a lot of drips at all Same with the vertical unit tag. Those were all done on fairly sort of it's still a smooth surface But a more porous part of this particular smooth surface And you have that ability to write without drips if you want. The only thing that's a bit of a double-edged sword, particularly with the nib that Molotow provides for us, is when it does have that more rounded shape, which does flatten out over time, I should mention, that more rounded shape tends to be a little worse for streaking if you're trying to write without a lot of drips. So you just be aware of that. That's something that I've found just using a lot of different mops. Let me know if you guys have had the same experience or if the sort of newer, more rounded nibs tend to do that for you guys. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on that in the comments. I did try to do the urch tag over top of a black ink tag just to test the vibrancy when it's got a bit of a rough background. That black ink is Witch's Brew ink, by the way. If you want to know more about that, you can check the video in the corner and in the description. It's one of the thickest inks you will ever come across. It's beautiful. But the urge tag, you can see it actually did fairly well considering that there's an ink under it. Inks tend to just ravage the paints that you try and put over top of them in general. And the Molotow alcohol-based paint at least did quite well on top of it. In general, though, the vibrancy and the trueness of the these colors is really, really strong. I did not find that they were anything but vibrant, really, is, is to put it simply. The red is a nice, true sort of traffic red. That's exactly what they call this, at least traffic red. Very consistent coloring throughout. Although I'm never a fan of sort of the sliding of lines, when it does slide like this, which is mostly because of the surface we're writing on here, it gives you an opportunity to check out the consistency of the paint, and this is consistent all the way through. So you can tell that this particular paint formula by Molotow is very consistent. That's generally one of the elements that you tend to pay a little bit more for, specifically with Molotow, that carries their brand name a little bit. If there's one thing I had to pick out about this mop that I really am not thrilled with. Again, it's actually just about sort of how the drips work. They're very sort of two-dimensional. With a lot of other paint formulae, you'll see much thicker three-dimensional drips. It's more of a personal preference to have those thicker ones, I suppose, but I'd again be interested to see which kinds of drips you guys are partial to. Do you like the really thick three-dimensional drips, or do you sort of more like the messy all-over-the-place drips that you get with this, where you can't necessarily tell where the drips are 
are going to originate from. Just to touch on the flow, since I said that's the third thing we were gonna look at, the flow of these mops is beautiful, but that's again assisted by just how squeezable these are. It really does live up to its name, the Molotov dripstick. But having taken a look at some of these tags on a smooth surface that's perfect for these mop nibs, I have an idea that I think you guys are going to like, so let me run it by you. Okay, so you are seeing now a few different mops here. I did mention that the Molotov Dripstick Mini here is a bit more expensive than the Grog Squeezer Mini 5mm and the OTR 007. But all three of these mini mops have the exact same nib size, even though they want to differentiate it by 5mm, 6mm. They're all interchangeable, actually. And all three of these types of mops are very similar in carryability. They're all great fun pocket size mops. So let me know in a comment if you want to see a head-to-head-to-head -head -to -head comparison of the Molotov Drips mini versus the grog squeezer five millimeter mini versus the otr 007 because i want to really take a look at these and lay out each of the benefits of each of them and see which is the best mini mob so if you want to see that comparison just let me know in a comment and for those of you who have used the molotov dripstick mini let everyone else know in the comments too what your experiences have been with it because the more knowledge we can share in our great little graffiti community here on the channel the better off we all are we have a whole playlist of graffiti mop reviews specifically if you're interested in checking out different graffiti mops and seeing which ones you want to pick up for yourself that that is what's on screen for you to check out right now. I will see you over there in a bit, I hope. Until then, peace.